our Love Project shirt. It's an extra, extra large, in case you wanted to know what those look like. Um, I also see some diversity in the, uh, in the audience. I see some, some, uh, some of the old school tie-dye shirts and uh, last year's uh, Love Project shirts. Um, so, so thank you. If you don't have a shirt and you want one, I think we, we still have some, some extras, maybe. Um, but this is the, uh, this is the second uh, uh, time we've done the Love Project. I was thinking a lot about, about, about the, uh, the attire. Um, we see, we see uh, change of clothes being used as a, as a metaphor for, for being clothed in the, in the righteousness of God. And so it's not, but it's also, um, it's also like a uniform because we're, we're, we're individuals, but we're, but we're like part of a team, like the Patriots or even better though. So, um, so what's going to happen today um, and if, if you're visiting, I apologize, because this is different than what we usually do. But uh, we're going to have uh, the service, and then we're going to have breakfast. Again, it's a communal meal, because we're, we're trying to build community. And then we're going to go out into the community for the different projects. If you haven't signed up for one, there's still time. Um, or you can at least join ours. We're, anybody. Um, but thank you for coming, and uh, thank you for being part of the body of Christ. Um, This morning, that's taken from Psalm 33. I forgot. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name.
that we're doing today are evidence of that, Lord. There are people, all of us, who, who need you, who need your redemption, who need to be reminded that in the end, things will be made well. So we thank you for the opportunity to be a part of that work this morning, Lord, of building a vision of your kingdom here on earth, offering a taste of the time when all will be well to those who desperately need it, ourselves included. We pray that you would be with us today, um, focus our hearts for the rest of the service, speak to us through your word and your truth and your beauty. Amen. Please greet one another with love. love. Project Sunday, and uh, God is sending his showers of blessings upon us outside, and we pray what he's doing with the weather will also bless us spiritually, and uh, just uh, 
know that there'll be some singing in the rain today and some dancing in the rain, and we won't let the weather quench the spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, before we pray, um, for all the project leaders, when you go to the brunch, uh, Kathy Romeo will give you one of these, uh, what on earth am I here for, all right? So see Kathy at the brunch, and we'll give you, uh, she'll give you one of these uh, for your project to minister to the people that you're going to, going to serve. Well, let's, uh, let's hear the scripture, and then we'll pray together, and then we'll sing the Lord's Prayer, and it'll be the, a different version that we sing in the summertime that's not quite so high, all right? So those of you that have lower voices will say, Amen. And for those high sopranos, we apologize about bringing it down a little bit, but that's what we'll be doing. Psalm 33. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Lord, we put our hope in you this day. We put our hope in you. And in you our hearts rejoice. We trust in your holy name. You are our help. You are our shield. You are our protector. You are the reason for our very being. We thank you for this privilege of worship together as a church community. We pray that you unite our hearts together in love for you loving you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving one another as ourselves. Lord, as we go out today uh, uh, in various places and corners of our communities, uh, as we serve here at Trinity, and as we go out into homes and, and places uh, uh, of recreation and so forth uh, to, to work, we pray your blessing upon each particular uh, project. We pray for those working on the Bolton Trails, for those working in clearing brush, for those that are sharing the gospel in Clinton. Father, whatever it is, whether you're serving breakfast or brunch or going out to sing, Father, all these uh, projects are from you. And may we do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. May we just yield ourselves to you. And may your blessing of the Holy Spirit flow through us that we would be like a hose of your grace, showering upon people love and kindness and goodness, and uh, may we do it with great humility as well. Thank you, Father, for the day that you've made. We thank you for the privilege of being called your kingdom people, and we ask your blessing upon us. Father, we want to pray uh, for Helen and for Russ. Uh, we pray for them uh, and the, the Ranger family. We pray for them at and the passing of, of Helen's uh, beloved father, John. We thank you for a wonderful memorial service and funeral service for him here at Trinity this week. And we thank you for the flowers on the communion table uh, from that funeral. Lord, we pray that you'd pour out your grace upon them and upon all who mourn. Father, thank you for the privilege of calling you Father. And we ask that you hear us now as we sing unto you the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray.
this time we'll take up our morning offering, and we've got special music today by Deb Lang, Bill Prococo, and Phyllis Royce, and uh, hear this scripture from Psalm 54 and verse 6. I said, I will, I will sacrifice a freewill offering to you. I will praise to your name, O Lord, for it is good. God is a good God, and let us uh, offer our free will offerings to him and praise to him as our loving God.
right. Would you please pray? Lord, we thank you for this glorious morning, for this time that we can gather to worship together and uh, to embark on these love projects today. We thank you for the many blessings you've given us, that it is our privilege to give back to you a portion of that for the furtherance of your kingdom here in Bolton and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It is my honor and privilege to read to you from God's Word, uh, this, uh, this worship service. Um, we're going to start today in the Old Testament, way back in Exodus, in uh, chapter 31, starting at verse 1. In your pew Bibles, you'll find that on page 136, Genesis, Exodus, chapter 31. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of craftsmanship. Moreover, I have appointed Aholiab, son of Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan, to help him, and I have given skill to all the craftsmen to make everything I have commanded you the tent of the meeting, the ark of the testimony with the atonement cover on it, and all the other furnishings of the tent, the table, and its articles, the pure gold lampstand, and all its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offerings, and all its utensils, the basin with its stand, and also the woven garments, both the sacred garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments for his sons when they serve as priests, and the anointing oil, the fragrant incense for the holy place, they are to make them just as I commanded you. Please turn now to the New Testament, to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, <clears throat> and you'll find that on page 1542. Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 31, and we'll read through verse 40. Hear now the words of our Savior. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Finally, our New Testament reading comes from 1 Peter 
chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, found on page 1890. And I invite you to listen for the scripture that we have chosen for the Love Project. If you look in the person in front of you, you may have one of the shirts on it. Uh, shirts on, you'll see it. But I you know, invite you just to tune your ears to, to hear how that is woven into today's reading. First Peter, chapter 4, 1 through 11. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. As a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, detestable idolatry. They think it's strange when you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dissipation and heap abuse on you. But they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to men in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Well, the uh, sermon today is taken primarily from 1 Peter 4 as Mark has already uh, spoken about the scripture that's on the back of the, the, the gray t-shirts, if you have this year's model. We have an outline for the sermon today in page 8, and there's lots of room for you to write some notes in there. Um, so I commend that to you uh, for following along, but also to write some things that maybe God will speak to you uh, through the message today and say, that's my takeaway. That's what I want to put into practice, put into action. So be listening as God speaks to you through the preaching of his word. Father, thank you so much for the privilege of preaching. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of hearing your word read and proclaimed. And Lord, we ask now that you give us ears to hear what you have us to hear as your people, and that you would open up our minds and our hearts to your truth, and may, uh, may we receive your truth and, and we know that we'll profit from it as we do. In your name we pray, amen. The title of our message today is His Kingdom People Called to Love Jesus and to Serve Others. Our theme this year for the Love Project 2 on the back of the t-shirt simply says this, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Each one should use whatever gifts he's received to serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms. We'll be looking at this verse in the greater context of, of the 11 verses that surround it uh, to help us ask, answer the question, what does a kingdom of God person, a, a son or daughter of the kingdom, do as a result of being part of the kingdom of God? Not only what we believe, but what do we do? 
We are to, to bring together our, our faith and our actions. What grants us entrance into Christ's holy kingdom is the grace of God, the grace of God and our faith in Jesus' finished work on the atonement, on the cross. As the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 2, even the faith that we have is a gift from God, so we can't boast. The boasting is not in our works. It's all of grace. It's all of God, what he's done for us in the person of Jesus. God's great love for us is demonstrated in sending his beloved son Jesus to, to die upon the cross for our sins. As 1 John 4 says, we love because what? He first loved us. So God is the one who loves us. God is the one who sends us his grace. He's the one that gives us the faith to believe. He gives us the Holy Spirit to have the power to serve. And so it's all about God. It's all about Jesus Christ and uh, what he's called us and what he will do through us. Well, with that bit of introduction, we come to our first point on what a kingdom, uh, kingdom of God, a daughter or son does. Number one, a kingdom daughter and Son of God lives to do the will of God. We see that in 1 Peter 4.1. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly life for human desires, but rather for the will of God. We live for the will of God. If you're a kingdom person, a son or daughter, it's all about, God, what is your will? What is your will for my life? Speak, Lord, for your servant is ready to do that will and to embrace that will, whatever that may be, that your kingdom may be advanced. Jesus, who was sent to the earth by God the Father, came to this earth to offer up, offer up his life to be the appointed sacrifice for our sins. That sacrifice on the cross was the way of suffering, suffering in his flesh, in his body, in his entire being. He is, as Isaiah the prophet said, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And the will of the Father was that his son would go this way of the cross, and by the way of the cross he would suffer and die for our sins. And he was wrestling with this in the, in the garden before, uh, before he went to the cross, the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, if it be possible, take this cup from me, this cup of suffering. Nevertheless, not my will, but what? Thine be done. Jesus Christ embraced the will of the Father. He embraced the will of the cross, even though it was a way of suffering for him. And he was a suffering servant Messiah. And so this is what Peter says here when he says Christ suffered in his body, and we are to arm ourselves with the same attitude. So don't be complaining about the rain. I don't want to hear anyone complaining about the rain. It's not a big deal. Think about what Jesus has done for you, how he suffered in order to, so that you may have life everlasting and that we are called to embrace the will of God the Father. And so we seek first the kingdom of God as kingdom daughters and sons of grace. And we pray, Lord, may your will be done in my life. May your will be done. That's my purpose that I would know his will and would do it. Number two, a kingdom daughter or son lives for Jesus Christ, knowing that they'll be judged and rewarded for their obedience to him. Looking at verses three to five, it says there that, that those who, who, will, uh, who live wild and reckless and godless lives are surprised that you're not joining them. What's wrong with you? Why don't you just get drunk with me? What's wrong with you? Why don't you get high? What's the big deal? What's wrong with you? Why can't you do this and fill in the blank? Whatever it is, they say, you're no fun anymore. What's going on, you see? And so uh, Peter says, don't be surprised when those who live a wild and reckless and godless life are, are, are surprised that you're not joining them. But, but he says they must give an account of their life before the judgment seat of Christ. A kingdom daughter or son lives for Jesus knowing that we will be judged for what we do and we don't do, and we will be rewarded, rewarded by, our, by the Lord for obedience to him. Jesus speaks about this in Matthew chapter 25 when he says, "'Come ye who are blessed by my Father, 
inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. And this is, this is the great, great white throne judgment seat of Christ. And all the nations of the, of the world are come before Jesus. And he separates them as a shepherd separates the, the sheep and the goats. And, and, and he says to them, and, uh, you know, come, you who are blessed by my Father. Speaking to those that are, are the sheep. You inherit the kingdom prepared for you. I was hungry, and you gave me food, and, and, and I was naked, and you clothed me, and so forth. And then they asked this question, Lord, when were you naked, and we clothed you? When were you hungry? When, we, when were you a stranger, and we took you in? Verse 39 says, and when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Think about that today. As you go and you serve, whatever you're doing, you say, you know, I don't have a big role. Maybe I'm just supposed to put the mulch from the pile into the wheelbarrow. That's, that's about what I can handle. Well, you do it for Jesus. Or maybe I'm working in the kitchen, and I, I didn't cook anything, but I'm going to wash the dishes afterwards. Do it for Jesus. Maybe you're going to sing today, and your voice is not the best. I mean, you're probably at a concert this week, and you're yelling and screaming, and you, you lost your voice, and you're not, now you need to go and sing. Well, just do it to the glory of God. Whatever God has given you, use that to serve him. And think about even a cup of cold water to give to someone. Maybe today, a cup of hot coffee. I don't know. But to give to someone in Jesus' name. Do it as unto Christ. When you see the people you're working with, the people you're serving, do it as unto Jesus. This is one, I'm doing this for you, Lord. I'm doing this for you. We will be rewarded, and we will be judged. Well, thirdly, a kingdom daughter, son, loves Christ and others deeply. That's what 1 Peter 4, 6 to 8 says. We all sin and fall short of the glory of, God's, of God. God's kingdom people are far from perfect. Would you agree with that? Some of you are still thinking about it, all right? <laughs> Wait a minute, you set me up or what? Are you perfect? No. We all fall short. We still give in to temptations of anger sometimes with our temper. We still treat people unkindly. We still battle with selfishness. We still battle with pride. And so we're not perfect people, but we serve a perfect Christ. We serve a perfect God, a good God. And so we are called to love one another deeply, loving our brothers and sisters in Christ, loving those that not only we're serving alongside of, but those that we are serving, loving them. First Peter says that love covers a multitude of sins. You know, you, you may not be perfect. You may say the wrong thing. You, you may be a critical person. And then you say, you know, forgive me. I, I, I what comes out of my mouth is, is cr critical thinking, but I, I love you, and I'm still trying to love you. Work with me, will you? Give me some grace. Well, love, the kind of love is not boastful. It keeps no record of wrongs. It hopes. It trusts. It's, it's what it is to be a, a Christ follower, to be a member of God's kingdom people. It's all about love. Number four, a kingdom daughter or son uses whatever gifts they've received to serve others as they minister God's grace in its various forms. Look at verse 9 of our text. Offer hospitality one, with one another without grumbling. It's interesting. Sometimes you say, all right, I'll, I'll offer hospitality, but I'm, I'm not going to be happy about it. All right, come on in, but just leave your muddy shoes outside. You know, all these people always come in to my house and they always mess it up. Well, don't be grumbly. Why did you park on the grass? What do you think I got a paved, a paved driveway for? Come on. Don't be, don't be grumbling about that when people come to serve 
or they come uh, into your house, show hospitality. That's true in the church. As people come in, we, we show hospitality. Also in our homes, wherever it is that we welcome people without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others. Think about that. What gift has God given you? What spiritual gift has he entrusted to you? Are you using it to serve others? It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about serving others. Serving others. This is what it means to be a kingdom follower of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible records at least 20 spiritual gifts which God has given to members of his kingdom family. All do not have the same gifts. He gives them as he determines. It's God's grace. He says, by my grace, I'll give you this gift. No, wait a minute, Lord. I don't want gift number two. I want gift number five. No, no, no. You have this gift. It's mercy. You don't understand. If, if I have the gift of mercy, that means you're going to give me people that I need to be merciful to. That's the idea. Well, this gift of leadership, I don't, I don't want it. That means i got to always be leading. That's right. Lead. Administration. You've given me this gift of administration. What does that mean? We're going to give you things to do to oversee and to organize and to put together. You see? So whatever the gift that God has given you, he's given it to you to serve others. To some is given a spirit of evangelism, to share the gospel with others. Some are given creative gifts, gifts of being able to, of craftsmanship and building and creating and beautifying. We find this in Exodus 31. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. I filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability, intelligence, and knowledge, and craftsmanship to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, and cutting stones for setting carving wood to work in every craft. To some of you, God has blessed you with the gift of craftsmanship, using your hands, creating works of beauty. Use that. Use that to serve others. Use that gift to serve the Lord. Well, we've intentionally set aside this day, Love Project 2, as a day where we all go forth to serve others. Does this mean we're done for the rest of the year? All right, I'm glad we, we did it. You know, check the box. I've served others. I am a kingdom follower of Jesus Christ. No, it's just this one day to say we're going to do something intentionally together to spur us on to acts of service throughout the year. Maybe you do it as a small group. Maybe you do it as a family. Maybe you, you get together several families in the neighborhood and say, you know, let's have our own love project. Let's do this. Let's, let's go do that. So it's to spur you on to further love, to create a culture of service, of love and good deeds as a core value of who we are in Jesus Christ we serve. Number five. A kingdom daughter or son serve others with the strength God provides in the fullness of the Spirit to the glory of Christ the King. Look at verse 11 of our text. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. Now, some of you are tired right now. I said, I don't normally get up this early. I just don't. Those that come to 8 o'clock and said, what's the big deal? I do it every week. Every week I'm here for, for, for church. What's wrong with the rest of these people? All right? Well, whatever your condition, maybe you put in a full week's work. Maybe you put three weeks' work into one this week. I don't know. But you're tired. Serve with the strength that God provides. He'll give you the strength He'll give you the energy. He'll give you the heart to serve. Just say, Lord, I'm waiting upon you. Renew my strength. So that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, power forever and ever. We become vessels of God's grace to others, speaking God's word into people's lives. It's God's truth that will set people free. 
We minister in the power of the Holy Spirit, working and serving heartily, waiting upon the Lord for his strength, that in all things Jesus Christ may be glorified. This is what it means to be a kingdom a daughter or son of grace. It points other people to Christ. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to point people to Jesus? You may have times to pray with people that you see today that you're just getting to know. I've got some teenagers that are going to go on my project, I hope. All right? I don't even know who they are. They're not even part of Trinity. I'm, I'm looking forward to that time to say, nice to meet you. Can we have some prayer together? Who knows? Some of you may be giving uh, this, uh, this special, what on earth am I here for? I'll be giving this to, to a woman here in Bolton and saying, you know, we're, we're so glad we could come and serve you. I'd like to give you this, uh, this little track we're giving out to people. What on earth am I here for? Have you wondered about that? Have you wondered why you're here? She said, yeah, that's a great thing. Here you go. This may help direct you. Uh, there's scriptures in here. There's some answers in you here, and let me pray with you. So point people to Christ. Be a vessel of God's grace. So in re review, what does a kingdom daughter or son do as a result of becoming an heir of God in Christ Jesus? One, they live to do the will of God. Two, they live for Jesus Christ, knowing they'll be judged and rewarded for their obedience to him. Three, they love Christ and others deeply. Four, use whatever gifts they receive to serve others as they minister God's grace in its various forms. Five, they serve others with the strength that God provides in the fullness of the Spirit to the glory of Christ the King. Above all, read the Scripture with me. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Each one should use whatever gifts he's received to serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms. Let's pray together. Join in our unison prayer. It's in your bulletin on page 9, and we'll also project it on the screen in front of you. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace through the eternal merits of Christ Jesus the Son, Savior and Lord of glory. Grant us willing and obedient hearts that as your kingdom people, we will know and do your will on earth. Help us to use those gifts in their various forms according to the grace given us, proclaiming your kingdom's coming into the lives of others, loving and serving them deeply from the heart. May we, as your daughters and sons of the kingdom, point others to Christ Jesus, <coughs> serving in the strength of the Holy Spirit, that you, the glory of Christ Jesus, crucified, risen, ascended, sovereignly ruling, and coming again in power and glory. Stand together.
I'd like to give the benediction, uh, but before I do that, I'd like to pray for the Love Feast meal, because the, what we'll do is, after the blessing, we'll invite you to go up to Fellowship Hall. As soon as you come in there, you'll get a plate, you'll go right through the line, get your breakfast, your brunch, and then sit down. All right? So we're going to have the, breast, the blessing here first. So... Father, we thank you for the food that we're about to receive. Thank you for the spiritual food that we've just received. We give you thanks for your living word. May we feast upon your word every day and grow stronger as sons and daughters of your kingdom. And Father, we pray for those that are not yet members of that kingdom, that are considering what does it mean to be a Christ follower. They're hearing these messages. They're, they're listening to the songs. And they're contemplating, is this something for them? Are they, too, to become a follower of Jesus Christ? We pray for your saving work, for your grace, your kindness, to lead them to repentance, that they, too, may enter into uh, the kingdom of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So bless the food that we will receive and bless our service. Thank you for the hands that have prepared this special love feast brunch. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all as you go and serve. Go in peace.